I made more than one mistake in the Spec House series, I'm quite sure. And I admitted one or two, I think. But there's one that I haven't addressed yet that's a real mistake that I need to clean up right here, right now, and it's in episode 76. Episode 76 is about cutting valley rafters and jacks. And I gave you some bad information about how to use a framing square and the tables on the framing square to get the cheek cut or side cut on your valley jack rafters. Now I'm gonna show you what it was that I told you that is wrong, how to fix it, and then I'm gonna give you a story from when I was 18 years old about a man who was a mentor and a blessing in my life, Neil Hart. Here's what I told you. A framing square is a marvelous tool and it has rafter cutting tables. On this Johnson square, the fourth table from the top is, one, two, three, four, fifth table from the top is side cut of jacks. And there's a series of numbers that on Johnson squares are to be used over or in conjunction with 12 to mark the cheek cut, side cut. I told you that you should take that, those numbers, and I'm gonna use the uh, imaginary pitch of 12-12 because it's a more pronounced difference. I told you to take that 12-12, look on the table and see what the, num the value is, and the value under a 12 pitch is eight and a half. What that means is, I said, you take the eight and a half, 12, 12, eight and a half, and mark it. And then comes the mistake. I told you to use your speed square, get the number of degrees, set that number of degrees on your skill saw and make the cut. Completely wrong. All that you do when you're cutting hip or valley jacks is set your skill saw at 45 degrees and make the cut because you're coming in from two walls that are 90 degrees and laying up against a valley rafter that bisects the angle. Here's how you do it. You simply put the pitch on the board, 12, 12, make the mark. Take your skill saw, set it to 45 degrees and cut it. Now if that was the top of a jack, it would lay up real nice against your valley or a hip. Here is how that compares to the value on the square. If you remember, the value on the square was eight and a half over 12. See that? Just putting the square parallel to where the 45 degree angle emerges from the cut pretty much exactly corresponds to eight and a half, 12. And we know that it's a 45 degree angle measured perpendicular to the cut. What this means is in an age of circular saws, that cheek cut, side cut table is pretty obsolete. But I didn't learn this from a guy who knew anything about circular saws. I learned this from Neil Hart. When I was 18, he hired me to help him up on a little roof, a remodel, tying two structures together. And he had never picked up a circular saw in his life. And so he explained the cheek cut to me. And here's how it went. Let me mark this again. If you were cutting this with a handsaw, you would put that cheek cut that you got off your square on the edge of the board. And then you would flop the board over and put the pitch. 12-12, common pitch, where it emerges, where that cheek cut mark emerges. And then you would mark it. Next comes the daunting task of making that cut with a handsaw. So with the cheek cut more or less established on the edge of the board, I can trade sides Now besides the fact that I'm tired and I want to break, 
Let me just point out that there is where it emerges. And it matches very close the false cut that I started with down the measurement. Let me resume that. So the trick there, as I understand it, since I have almost never done this with a handsaw, but always with a circular saw, is that you can get two cuts established coming around the corner and then follow it right on across. In order to get a 45 degree bevel, even though you did not have a skill saw with a table that you could put on a bevel. You see that? That cheek cut mark on the edge makes it possible to get a 45 degree compound miter cut with a handsaw. Now there's a couple of things that have emerged from this. Number one, I appreciate the comments because I thought these thoughts after I read a comment that a guy said, I've been doing this for 40 years and this guy's full of crap. You don't have to mess with a, with a square like that. And I thought, what? But I learned it from Neil Hart and Neil Hart was a fully trained old school carpenter. So how could it be wrong? Well, it's wrong because as Odell says, anybody with even an elementary understanding of geometry is gonna know that when you have these boards coming in and intersecting a 45 degree bisecting angle, the angle of the cut's gonna be 45 degrees. So the cheek side cut of Jack's table on squares is only useful if you're stuck using a handsaw. And if you just handsaw very much, you are going to have a powerful right arm. One of the reasons I think that I was so eager to use this understanding of the cheek cut table for all that time was how much I loved and respected Neil Hart. He owned the Dixonville store, population six, him and his family. He was the self-proclaimed and universally accepted mayor of Dixonville. He was a scoutmaster, he was a school bus driver, he was a storekeep, he built his own store, he did his own books. My wife Kelly worked for him when she was in high school, about four years before she was my wife. Neil was the kind of guy who, when the high school kids would come in there for any reason, he would say, come over here, what math class you taking? And they would tell him, he would say, okay, talk to me about Pythagoras. Or if they had gotten to quadratic equations in Algebra two, he would say, solve this for me. He was smart. He was in fact gifted and he had a heart about the size of Texas and he understood carpentry. He understood carpentry at a deep level from an older school application. I don't know what Neil would think now about chop saws and skill saws and nail guns, but I know this, that if he would have used them, he would have mastered them. So it was a little hard for me to surrender my understanding of how what he taught me would tie into the carpentry world I worked in. It was a matter of confirmation bias biting me. So thank you to whoever it was that put that scathing comment in the comments. Thank you to all of you for uh, chiming in and teaching and explaining and asking. The comment section is where the real value of this channel happens. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman. Keep up the good work.